Well, good morning, Eastridge Church family. Welcome to Church Online. Pastor Ray here. I'm excited to bring the word to you. Uh, but before we do, I just want to give you a couple of quick announcements, all right? First off, is Easter happening? It sure is. All right, so tune in. Good Friday uh, service is happening at 10 a.m. It'll be posted on our website. Um, and again, we're continuing with our tradition of joining in with Gormley Missionary and Markham Missionary Church. Uh, so tune in. It's going to be a lot of fun. As well, Easter Sunday, uh, or better yet, Resurrection Sunday is happening on April 12th. Uh, again, the service will be posted on our website at 9.30 a.m. It's going to be an exciting one, a fun one, so make sure you tune in for that as well. Now, those of you who are listening, um, if you have time during your weeks uh, or if there's any of interest, to be able to just make uh, a few phone calls during the week, uh, to be able to connect with other church people, um, we, we're basically looking to expand our care team. So if that's of any interest to you, uh, would you please email Pastor Tim? His email is tim at eastridge.ca, and uh, he'd be very appreciative of that. And I also want to let you know that uh, if you missed it last week, we relaunched our website, eastridge.ca. And under the ERC online tab, you're going to be able to find uh, a wide variety of online events, um, especially for the kids. There's a lot uh, that Rebecca has been planning. So do take a moment to check that out. And I think Sunday school is happening right after this. So tune in for that, kids. <laughs> okay, now uh, I just want to take a moment to pray for our tithes and offerings. Now, I'm thinking of those who are dealing with changes in their job situation, and I just want to let you know uh, we're here to stand with you, to pray with you. Um, I understand it can be a tough time. So if you're still believing in the power of tithing, that this is an act of worship, then I want to pray with you, uh, to stand in agreement with you that you're acknowledging that Jesus is the source of all your supply. You know, and no matter what's happening around the world, if this is something you want to continue to do to honor Him, then by all means, you know, give what you can. Um, because, hey, God's the one who's going to take care of you. It's not the job. Can I just put that out there? Your job isn't the source. Jesus is your source. And He uses these as channels. So remember, the source is Him. So that's why we want to pray. Okay, that being said, we have uh, different options. If you'd like, uh, whatever suits you. Uh, we can give online via our website. You can go to eastridge.ca under the Give tab. Um, you can also email money transfer. And the email is finance at eastridge.ca as well. If you want to keep it like, what do you call it, snail mail, you can still mail in your checks. Um, that works too. And uh, I think I heard that some have signed up for the pre-authorized giving. So that's another option. You can uh, email office at eastridge.ca and our office administrator can set that up for you. Okay, so if you're giving right now, uh, you can hold your check or your phone, however you're giving, just hold it in the air. Let's pray. Jesus, Lord, we just thank you so much for this opportunity to come and worship you in this manner. Lord, we honor you with our tithes and our offerings. As we give, Lord, we declare that, Jesus, you are the source of all our supply. And so, Lord, as we honor you, we thank you that whatever is being given right now, that, Lord, you're making the rest of the whole lump holy and that you're setting it apart and able to stretch it more than the hundred. So thank you, Lord, for blessing each one that is giving to your kingdom's work, Lord. May your good news, may your love, continue to spread to, through this town and around the world. We thank you, Lord, for this. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a lot of bad news going around these days. Any news outlet, any social media, you're going to be looking at news that is going to make you afraid. And so to combat that, we want to share good news, right? We want to share about things that God is doing amongst his people um, because that builds faith. Right? Amen? So we have a fresh testimony that has come in. And uh, this was a prayer that prayer request that was sent out and God answered. So we want to celebrate that with them and with you. Uh, this testimony says, Praise God that our teenage son returned home safely from Germany. No flights were canceled. He is feeling healthy. And the airports and planes had very few people. So, so it was easy uh, to be socially distant. In addition... 
the global day of prayer that, we, um, that happened last Sunday, we were able to be together as a family to pray. All praise and glory goes to him who is able through his mighty power to accomplish infinitely more than we ask or think. Ephesians 3.20. Thanks for praying. It's testimonies like this that show it doesn't matter how big or small the, the, the request is, but it's the fact that God cares about every detail and that he's able to move, that he hears our prayers. So that being said, again, on our website, eastridge.ca, there's a testimonies uh, page that's going to be there. Please send in your, your testimonies. Send in your praise reports of what God is doing in your life or in the lives of those around you. Um, we we want to share. We want to see good news. Amen? All right. Now, I'd like just to take a moment to pray before we get into the sermon. Father, we just thank you so much uh, again for this time to gather in your presence, to get into your word. Holy Spirit, would you just open up our hearts and our minds to hear from you this morning? Thank you for showing us Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Uh, today, what we're going to be looking at is about meditating on God's word. And you might be thinking, well, why? Why would we need to do that? Let me tell you, it's crucial. It's vital to your well-being, uh, especially in the times that we're in. All right. Um, a friend of mine recently shared this post, and they shared about an experience that they had. They they were in Honduras, and they had to go on a trek. It was one of those morning hikes. It was five in the morning. It's pitch black, and they're going up a side of a mountain, and no idea where to go. But yet. The realization my friend had was, I'm afraid, I, don't, I can't even see where I'm taking my next step. However, the guide that I'm following knows the way. So even in the dark times that we're in, we might not even know what's going to happen tomorrow. We, we might be facing, you might be facing situations right now where I don't know how we're going to make ends meet. Things are looking tough. I want you to know. You have a guide who is with you, and his name is Jesus. And he is the one who knows the way and is walking with you every step of the way. So yes, we might not know everything, but we know the one who is leading us. And that's what matters. That's what counts. How do you get to know the one who is leading you? That's why meditating on the word matters. Amen? Now, um, again, social media, you got to love it. Um, there's this group there, my friends start the Worship Project. Go check them out. They have great, great music, collective of uh, worship leaders all around Toronto. And they posted this one post that said, tell your mountain about your God. And that stuck, uh, stood out to me. That was like, yes, everyone's talking about the mountain right now. What's the mountain? The coronavirus. All of that. Corona this, corona that. Cor that's like a song, isn't it? Corona, corona. <laughs> Anyways. But that's the mountain that's in front of us. And it's almost as though, what a shift in mentality there. Let's tell this mountain how about our God. About how big he is. How, again, how do you tell this mountain about how big and how good and strong your God is? By meditating on his word. This is why meditating matters, okay? Um, okay, <laughs> one more thing that I saw on social media that, that ties this all together for us. Um, a doctor, someone posted an article about a doctor who, who literally said this tagline, the fear of the virus is deadlier than the virus itself. I sat there for a moment and thought, that... That's it. This is the truth right here. The virus, yes, I get it. It is, um, it, it is hurting a lot of people. It's spreading people. It's unknown. However, truth be, truth be told, it is the fear of it that's actually causing more problems. And you know, this doctor scientifically starts to show or explain why fearing it is actually worse. 
Because uh, when you're afraid, what does your body do to respond? It's the fight, flight, or I can't remember now. Freeze. <laughs> Thanks. Again, my wife is behind the camera there. <laughs> fight, flight, or freeze response. And this doctor was saying that as that happens, your body produces a hormone called cortisol. And that hormone actually weakens your immune system. Weakened immune system makes you more susceptible, right? So he, it's, it's amazing how even a doctor is showing you scientifically, fear kills, fear hurts you. So let's kick fear out. Don't worry, we're done with that series, but it's still relevant for now, okay? And um, what's funny is he said something very interesting. He's asking people to just shift your focus. So instead of looking at the news uh, and, and social media and all those negative headlines, he's saying, go and watch something that makes you laugh. Something as simple as that. Make yourself laugh. Um, it, it, as I was reading this article or skimming through it, I heard this phrase or I saw this phrase in my mind, eat, laugh, love. And I thought that that's something that's real, but my wife told me it's eat, love, pray based on some book and movie. So clearly, <laughs> whatever. But in my mind, in the moment, I thought eat. Well, yeah, eating is good. It makes you, it nourishes you and it makes you happy. At least it makes me happy. <laughs> but then laugh. Yeah, when you're laughing, you're joyful. You're enjoying life. You're carefree. You're not worried, you're not stressed. And then love. It made me think of, well, we love because he first loved us, right? So we, we can spend time focusing on his love. Anyways, okay, getting off track. But I say all of that to kind of pinpoint what the doctor was saying, to shift our focus. The amount of negative news that we're looking at and inputting into ourselves affects what we say. Have you heard some of your friends or your colleagues or whoever that's, and they're saying, oh, they're afraid of this. They're afraid of catching this. They're afraid of going here. They're, all they're saying is they're afraid of whatever. The more and more they're saying that, it repeats because then the more of that they're putting in. You see the cycle there? And this is what the enemy does. He gets you focused on all of these negative things on yourself alone and takes away your time to look at who? your Lord and Savior, the one who loves you and the one who created you. That relationship is so important and so vital, especially in these times. So let's shift our focus to focus on the good news, on the truth of God's word. Okay, I feel like I've talked a lot. Let's get into the word. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Uh, this might be a familiar verse to you, but uh, Joshua is the man who God has chosen to lead his Israelites into the promised land after Moses uh, passes on. And he says this, um, this book of the law, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. And then he goes on to end that verse and says, this will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Young men leading a large nation into unknown territory. And this is the advice or this is the, the, the thing that God is telling him to do so that he can prosper and have success in leading. And it's to meditate on the book of the law. And that's the scriptures that they had in that moment during that time. To meditate on the scripture day and night. But, but notice how it says, it shall not depart from your mouth. Why does he say mouth? What does that mean? It means to speak the word of God out loud. That is how um, you get it back onto the inside of you. Does that, does that make sense? You're watching the news and it goes into your ear gates, your eye gates, you're seeing it, you're hearing it. But at the same time, when you read the word, you're speaking it out loud so you can hear it. And then you're looking because you got to look to read. You're seeing it. And so you're getting more of God's word onto the inside of you. So as you speak it out, um, you shall meditate on it. And that word meditate in Hebrew is haga. And that means to, um, to chew, to mutter on it, uh, to, to continually repeat it. 
And so when it says meditate on it day and night, uh, sometimes you might have the picture like, okay, so I got to walk around with my Bible like 24-7. I can't do anything else. You know, I, I remember uh, hearing this one story of this pastor um, who, while he was young, he's a teenager, worked at an ice cream shop, and he was reading his Bible. He just wanted to get more of the Bible on the inside of him. And as he did that, he didn't care in this bad customer service. Can I tell you that? He didn't care who was in front of him. He's serving them, reading the Bible, and then going, putting the book down, and then continuing to scoop out the ice cream and whatnot and serve them. That's bad customer service, right? You're not paying attention to the customer. However, lineups came. Don't ask me how or why that happened, but we can only attribute it to the fact that God was doing something there. You know, and it's this idea that I'm going to, uh, sorry, and the point of me sharing that was not, oh, I have to hold this Bible up everywhere. No, the idea is I can take a verse, a couple of verses. I'm not saying a whole chapter, it doesn't have to be, but you take a verse and you can just recite it to yourself for the whole day. One verse for the whole day. And honestly, by the end of the day, you're going to have a different understanding of this, of this specific verse, right? Uh, uh, the classic example I love to use, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Some other translations say, I shall not lack. The Lord. Who is the Lord? The creator of the universe. This massive being who's so powerful, is, the Lord is present right now. He is my shepherd, the one who protects, who provides, who heals, who, who, who watches over. And so it, it just, even as you meditate on that, even as you, you just heard, the Lord is my shepherd, did, do you sense something different about who God is? But this is what it means to meditate day and night. You can just chew on it, okay? You mutter it under your breath while you're working, while you're cycling, while you're going on these walks now that you have time for. You know, you just meditate on it. It's going to produce this life-giving thing, <laughs> this source in you. Um, okay, that being said, that's kind of how you can do it, okay? But I want to get to the essence of why. Again, why is meditating on the word vital to our circumstances, to our situation, especially here and now? Think back to um, Matthew chapter 4, right? This is where Jesus uh, was just baptized. Spirit of the Lord descended on him like a dove, and God split open the skies. And he was so happy he couldn't contain his joy. And he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Amazing moment. Right after that, the Bible says that the Spirit led him into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And he was tempted by the devil. Okay? And so it's in this moment, the devil comes to him and three times tries to uh, basically make Jesus give up his authority and power that he has. He, he has no new tricks. He's doing the same thing that he did to Adam and Eve. And so he's giving Jesus this opportunity. I'll give you all of this uh, uh, glory and power over all from all these kingdoms. You can have it all if you just bow down and worship. But what does Jesus do in those moments? How does he fight back? He uses this. He says, it is written. What is that? He's quoting scripture. He's quoting God's word to fight the devil, to fight the enemy in what he's trying to do. That's why meditating on the word is so vital. The world right now is fearful. Like I said, you turn on the news, that's all you're hearing. Social media, that's all you're seeing. And all of that is feeding into you and it's making it's giving a, a headway for the devil to try and speak hey you got to be careful watch out you're going to catch this or, or or it makes you say 
I, I can't go out. I, I'm debilitated. I need to stay at home. That's it. I need to be in an oxygen tank, in a bubble. And it makes you fearful. You're thinking about your, your life. You're thinking about your family. You're thinking about the provisions that you need that you don't have anymore. Whatever it may be, the enemy is attacking with all of this. What do you do? Is it going to be just the natural fight, flight, or freeze? Think about it. If, if you let it all go, you're going to either run away from God, thinking that He's the source of all this. The devil can try to do that, right? Uh, then there's times where you're going to just freeze and not know what to do, and, and, and you're just going to sit there and do nothing. However, he gives you the way out. He's saying, meditate on his word. Because then you can say, okay, let, let's say the enemy is, let me just say this. Enemy saying, how are you going to make ends meet now? Your job situation just changed. What do you do? This is where you have some bullet verses. Have verses that you're memorizing, committing to your memory. Verses that you've been meditating on. If you haven't ever done that, there's no better time to start than now. Right? What, what do you say to that? There's a scripture that says, My God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. My God shall supply all your needs. All your needs are, are being supplied according to according to according to his riches not your faith not what you have done it's according to his riches see notice how the redirection is always about him focusing on what he has done but these are the verses that you say that you quote and, and what happens if the the same thought comes again a few minutes later the same idea you continue to quote the scripture. That's your weapon. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6. The armor of God. Let me turn there right now. Ephesians chapter 6. Apologies. This was not marked yet. There you go. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the dark, darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts and the wickedness of the heavenly places. Therefore, take on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The sword of the Spirit is the only piece of armor that is offensive, right? Everything else is defensive to protect you, but the sword is an offensive tool, and it's the Word of God. So as you meditate on the Word of God, this is what, uh, in a sense, helps the Holy Spirit bring to your remembrance in those moments when the attacks come, when the negative thoughts come, when the fearful thoughts come. You take the Word of God and you fight. But remember what I've said before. you got to love the book of Ephesians. How well you sit determines how well you walk, which then determines how well you you can say fight or stand see before you even get there before you even walk you need to sit you need to be at rest and when you're at rest 
the best place to be at rest is to be meditating on his word. Because that's how the enemy works. He needs to affect how you rest. And when you're agitated and fearful, you're not looking at the word of God. You're looking at everything else around you. Everything but the word of God. And so that's why today I'm talking to you about meditating on God's word. There's so much truth in this. And uh, if I may say this, we're living in an unprecedented time. But I feel that we can use this to our advantage. Better yet, God, this is not catching God by surprise. He's using this to his advantage. Okay? Think about it this way. For the first time, all at once, everyone is at home. Some are working. Some are figuring out how to balance work and family and all that. But everyone's at home. The normal hustle and bustle is not there anymore. The roads, yeah, I've driven, I have to go to my mom's or whatever. They're clear. It's like, the, it's a holiday. <laughs> All the time, the roads are clear. There's no traffic. Everyone's sitting at home. Let's take advantage of this time. I believe that as he has enabled everyone to be at home, we're able to continue to build family relationships, to focus on that. The family unit is becoming stronger. Uh, have you ever thought about the fact that, yes, you're watching me from the comfort of your own home. We're online. Every church in one instant, in one moment, went online. I've said this to you before, and like this is the fulfillment. The internet was created for the gospel to go out around the world in seconds. And this is exactly what has happened. Oh, hallelujah. How amazing is that? What the enemy is working for, for evil, God is using for good, for his advantage. But that being said, through this, I'm going to call it, it's a season. This season will pass. But I want you to know, we, I want you to be stronger on the other side. So use this time. Cultivate this time to be in his presence daily. Let's get into his word. Because, again, it will produce fruit in you. And, 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 and this will be the ammunition to fight back against the wiles of the devil. Against the, 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 the negative thoughts, the fearful thoughts that he tries to throw at you. But can I also just say this? This is an opportunity for you to continue to invite Jesus into your life. I get it. A lot of you who are listening, you've already accepted Jesus in your life. Yes, we're all saved. But there is a moment where we can continue to cultivate and grow in this relationship with Him. Let's use this moment as an advantage to continue to develop. Because I, I can't fully explain it to you, but what I do know there's something that God's going to do amazingly great at the end of this. Um, just with those who I'm talking to, what I'm seeing from different ministers around the world, just, wow, God, again, he's not caught by surprise, but he's going to be using this for his advantage. And it's going to be amazing. So let's be prepared for that. Amen? Let's get to know Jesus better. And let's continue to talk about him, okay? But that being said, okay, there might be some of you who have never had asked Jesus into your heart. You've never had this uh, relationship with him. I'd love to give you this opportunity to invite Jesus into your heart, okay? Um, right where you're seated, eyes closed, head bowed, you can say this prayer with me, all right? We're going to be celebrating Easter soon, but... Uh, this is the joy of what Jesus did. And this is why we're going to be celebrating Easter. All right. Jesus came to change the way things are. Jesus came to change the separation that we have from God. Okay. There's this thing called sin, and that is what separates us from God. Jesus came to abolish that. 
He's the bridge that, 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 that took all of our sin, past, present, and future. And he took the full punishment, which is death. And he died on that cross. He, he hung on that cross to take your place. And what did that do? It opened up the, a new and living way for you to cultivate and to be in the presence of God the Father forever. All right? So this is the love that, that we have because of what Jesus has done. So if you would just, again, eyes closed, head bowed, you can just pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for loving me and dying on the cross for me. Thank you that your blood was shed so that my sins would be forgiven, past, present, and future. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. I thank you that now I am a beloved child of God, and heaven is my home. I believe that you rose from the grave and that you're alive today. Thank you for walking with me every step of the way and for filling me with your joy and peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if that was your first time praying that prayer, would you please write in to us and let us know. Uh, I'd love to give you a gift um, as you start this journey, okay? And uh, folks, honestly, this week, use the time that you have at home, just to cultivate his presence, to get into his word, to meditate on his word. If you don't know where to start, choose a gospel and just read and just see what God opens up to you. Um, again, you can also use Psalm 91. That's a beautiful way to take one verse at a time and just meditate on it and, uh, and see what God does. All right, so let me pray for you. Father, thank you so much again for each one under the sound of my voice that, Lord, you would give them supernatural time this week to be able to spend time meditating on your word. And, uh, Lord, I pray that that would just produce in their lives. Um, thank you so much for protecting each one as they go in their goings and their comings this week. Lord, watch over them. Protect them and their families and their loved ones. Thank you for your provision for every need that they'll have, no matter the circumstances. Thank you for just being there, knowing and providing for every need. And Lord, we just want to take a moment to also pray for those who are on the front lines, that they would be protected and provided for as well. Um, Lord, we pray uh, for those who are researching for a vaccine and whatnot, would you give them your wisdom, continual wisdom, Lord? And for, and most importantly, we pray right now in Jesus' name that this virus would come to an end swiftly. We thank you, Lord, that you're at work. Hallelujah. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. All right, folks, uh, let me just end off by saying this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom, all-encompassing peace. And all together we said, amen and amen. God bless you, folks. Have a great week. And uh, I'll see you on Good Friday. For more information, visit our website at www.eastridge.ca.